Hello. Today I would like to talk about Arcane Mages in Phase 3, since we have a few weeks under our belts, how they are compared to other classes when it comes to scaling, and a few miscellaneous things that I have figured out. So the first thing I would like to point out is uh, group assignments. So last week I actually raided with a Boomkin and Elemental in a vast majority of all skills that I had, and I hit 99s in over half of the boss fights that I had that group. The reason this is, I don't know, acceptable and or potentially better, uh, depending on kill times, is that Boomkins and Elementals are giving you the 8% crit buff, which is scaling even further the Ash Tongue proc, since Ash Tongue procs haste off of getting crits, and if you have more crits, then you have more haste. So being in that group, you're actually getting more haste and crit. And because a uh, vast majority of the bosses are under two and a half minutes, in this setup, at least for me, I go um at roughly the three minute to 315 mark, depending on clear casting procs. So I actually don't need a Shadow Priest for all fights except for four or potentially three. So the only fights that I would actually definitely suggest you have a Shadow Priest on is Reliquary, uh, Council, and Illidan. Uh, Mother, you can get away with not having it, although it's probably the closest one to not needing a Shadow Priest. But I just say this to say that if you have an unideal raid comp, you could potentially go a week without needing a Shadow Priest, and you can go into the uh, crit group. Uh, and it would be okay. The next thing I'd like to talk about is the Ash Tongue Trinket. I've been using this for the past three weeks or so, and it stayed consistent, so the uptime for most fights is between 50 and 70. It's been as high as 70 because of the Boomkin Elemental group that I was in, but potentially you could s not use the Ash Tongue for two fights because there are specific scenarios in which an unused trinket is potentially better. So for Mother, since a lot of the damage is in a window, or should be in a window, of where you're getting the additional 25% damage buff from the rotating elemental buff that you get on her. An unused trinket potentially might be better than the Ashton trinket. I haven't fully tested this out, but it's potential. And for Reliquary, since a vast majority of the damage that you do is in the last 30 seconds of this fight, since you have an insane damage buff, an unused trinket potentially might be better, but for uh, all the other bosses, I would still stick with Ash Tongue since it's giving, but on average, 90 haste rating. In addition, Asgalore, I have a fairly low median uh, parse on this boss because for a vast majority of these weeks, I was not using Shadow Resist gear, which I don't think a lot of people are using Shadow Resist gear, but our kill time isn't insanely fast, so on a week to week basis, uh, six to seven silences go out at a time, and I was getting hit, or I wasn't resisting pretty much any of them, so I got kind of pissed off, and was like, hey, I'm just going to throw on some Shadow Resist gear and see how it does, and it actually works really well. So if the boss throws out seven silences, that's 35 seconds of silences, you can ice block one of them, uh, so whatever, 30 seconds, and it also, the silence interrupts casts, so Potentially, if you get hit by all seven silences, that's, what, 40 seconds of silences, and it's only a two-minute fight, so you basically sitting AFK a third of the time. But when I, the past two weeks, I've been running Shadow Resist gear, and I only got hit by one out of seven for one of the weeks, and then two out of six for one of the weeks. And this is how I got my 98 parse, is because I had Shadow Resist gear on. The resist gear that I used was the amulet, the cloak, and the bracers, which put me at around 220 or so shadow resist. And if you're not using shadow resist gear on this fight, I would suggest it. I think it's uh, on average better than not having it. So yeah, that's what I'll say about those. Next, I will talk about logs and scaling. So here... In my previous video, I talked about Arcane Mages still being some of the top DPS. Warriors and Hunters are doing better for various reasons, partially because a lot of the fights are more melee friendly. Like Archimon, Mages have to uh, decurse, or Mages have to tank on Illidari Council, or the silence that goes out on Asgalore. Those do not affect melee and Hunters, so 
that's partially why they're a lot higher than warlocks and mages. But I also said in my previous video that I believe arcane mages will still be better than warlocks in this phase. I still believe that's the case. But here are different uh, comparison points that uh, will support that. So here's Terran Gorping. The reason I chose Terran Gorping is because it's a stand there and DPS fight. You don't have to move. It's pretty much a target dummy, and it's a short fight. And I'll compare that with Illidan uh, in the next comparison. So here, this is the top 100 logs of the fight. And we'll just be looking at the buff count of 2 and 1. We won't be looking at 3s because people are getting double lust. And I don't believe that that's a good comparison because that, in my mind, is kind of cheating. So it's a very small comparison. Uh, there's only, what, 7 people. And they're between 3,000 and 3,150. Or actually 3,200 compare that to warlocks so warlocks we'll just be looking at the ones is 3100 to 3170 so these people's average is higher than the average of the mages but since it's such a small sample size uh, it's not really definitive proof that their uh, warlocks and mages are equivalently as good on short fights which is what one and a half minutes two minutes uh, we'll look at Illidan now, uh, since there's no definitive proof for short fights. Uh, for long fights, it kind of tells a different story, as uh, you would expect. So, since Arcane Mages are more bursty classes, uh, we'll just look at the twos for one uh, Innervate and one Heroism. They're doing between 1900 and 1960, and we'll look at Warlocks. There's a bigger sample size. They're doing between... Uh, 1980 to 2130. So from this small sample size, you can say that uh, Destruction Warlocks are doing better than Mages on Lung Fights, which we kind of knew from the beginning because uh, Arcane Mages excel in short fights. But since a vast majority of the fights in this phase are short fights, then um, Mages are actually still better. It's just this is the big outlier is Illidan. But even though it's, what, three times longer than the fight that we just showed, um, the DPS difference is only, what, let's say 50 to 100 DPS difference, although this is a small sample size. But let's look at a non-small sample size. So here is the Terran Gorfine, uh 99 percentile. I just put Fire Mages in because it's funny. Uh, they're not very good, even though they are scaling a bit. Although, interestingly, Affliction Warlocks are scaling just as well as them. But let's look at the top numbers, which is Arcane and Destruction. As you can see, Arcane is still above Destruction, but Destruction is scaling. So in the future, I wouldn't necessarily say that Destruction will surpass Arcane, just because as the phase goes on, fights will be shorter and shorter and shorter, and the shorter the fight, the better Arcane Mages will be. So even though if this chart continued, Destruction would be better than Arcane for extremely short fights. I don't necessarily believe this is the case. And in addition to this, I don't speak to the world, so a lot of these uh, Arcane Mages are not using the haste set that I suggest for the most damage output in my previous video. So all these Mages are still not hitting the 20% um, 5 Arcane Blast within the 4 second proc window. But hey, you can't convince everyone. So now let's look at Illidan. This is the Illidan fight. Fire Mages really low, partially because they cannot hit the Fire Elementals in Phase 2. So whatever, they're scaling, but still, yeah, Fire pretty bad. But you can see Destruction Warlocks scaling well and doing significantly more damage than Arcane. But from this chart, this is also still Illidan, but this is eliminating the Phase 2 encounter, or Phase 2 part of the fight. So... As you can see, war or Fire Mages are doing a lot better because it eliminates the part where they literally can't do damage. And Arcane Mages are actually still higher, even on Illidan, than Destruction Warlocks for all damage outside of Phase 2. The reason for this, because I would go as far to say as most 99 percentile fights, um, people are skipping the Shadow Phase for Illidan, and so... When people are doing this, no one's using cooldowns for the fire elementals. So arcane mages are basically conserving mana this whole entire phase. And that's why for this chart, they are significantly worse than 
um, warlocks, but in this chart they're actually slightly better. That's because arcane mages are conserving their mana. And again, I can't convince everyone, but for the Illidan fight specifically, the clear casting arcane missile spec that I suggest is actually better than the frostbolt spec by like a lot. So when these arcane mages are conserving mana, some of them are using three arcane blast, three frostbolt. Uh, which Frostwolf does terrible damage, whereas if these Arcane Mages were the spec that I suggest, they would be doing a lot more damage. You can look at my logs if you want to see that, but even conserving mana uh, using the Arcane Missile spec, it does, what, 2,000 plus DPS-ish uh, in good gear? So uh, I believe that even though Warlocks are doing significantly more than Arcane Mages, Arcane Mages are not playing this fight, Ideally, but yes, Warlocks are still beating mages on this fight in general, because even if they were the right spec, this gap wouldn't completely close. So now let's talk about all classes. So some interesting things to point out for this is this is the 90 percentile. So this is a, I don't know, more potentially better representation of the actual player base. It's not the parsing kings that are getting double uh, innervates or double heroisms or, I don't know, ridiculous cheese strategies. Uh, this is more representation of how strong the class is, potentially. So, Arcane is third. Retribution is fourth. Actually, better than Destruction. But something slightly interesting in an off-tangent is Frost Mages are actually scaling the best out of any class, including uh, Destruction and Fire. I just found this interesting, and I looked into frost logs. If you had this gear in this phase, they actually do a decent amount of damage. So in a two and a half and three and a half minute fight, a again a very geared frost mage can do between uh, 2,300 and 2,400 DPS on you know, like I said, two and a half and three minute fights. Again, this is what 400 DPS lower than what an arcane mage can do, but I just found that interesting. I personally don't really like fire, so if I were to handicap myself with a different spec, I would actually probably go frost, which is interesting. I didn't, I didn't think frost would actually do good. So instead of comparing the 90%, let's go to 95%. Arcane mages still in third, but uh, rogues come up significantly because these people have what better gear. They probably have four piece tier six, and etc. etc. So. Rogues, Ret, and Destruction are actually very close on the 95 percentile, but Arcane is still better. As you can see, DM Hunters are actually pretty stagnant, and Fury's uh, increasing uh, a lot more than BM at least, and Arcane Mages are actually pretty stagnant too. So now look at 99s. Arcane Mages still third, although potentially in the past two weeks, I mean, this is a bad chart, so I can't really look at exactly what the Rogan Mages. Uh, I'd have to unhighlight some stuff, but it's not important. Uh, let's say Arcane Mages are third. Rogues, if this is consistent, will probably pass Arcane Mages for the latter half of the phase. You would partially expect this because of Warglaives. They're going to be in this 99 percentile. And, I don't know, in general, like I said, melee classes are do doing better because of friendlier uh, fight mechanics in this phase. But, as you can see, even though Destruction is closing the gap from Arcane, Arcane is still significantly in the lead. What, 40, 50 DPS higher? So, I don't know. Maybe in another three weeks, four weeks, it'll be even closer. But as it stands, Arcane Mages will still be better than Warlocks uh, throughout this phase. So yeah, that's the update that I want to give you guys. If you have any questions, put them in the comments, and I'll get to them. Thanks.